Hey, good morning, everybody. I want to welcome you back to a beacon of light. I'm Brother Anthony, and I don't know what day it is. Today is uh, today's Wednesday, February 26th. It's about 8:27 a.m. I posted the video late today. It's my day off, but uh, I wanted to be wide awake when we read this chapter. <clears throat> Usually I'm waking up in the morning, getting ready for work, but today I just want to just uh, be wide awake because this chapter is a very important chapter. Um, we'll be reading from 2 Timothy chapter 3. <clears throat> if you uh, have been following along with the previous chapters, um, here Paul the Apostle is writing to Timothy <clears throat> while Paul is locked up in prison and he knows that his death is coming soon um, he's instructing Timothy about how to build a, a church how to how to <clears throat> the conduct and everything must go inside the church how people must act what he must watch out for Things that uh, that he must hold on to, like the sacrifice and uh, testimony of Jesus Christ. He must never falter from that message. Um, we also learn, excuse me, this phone's acting up. And how do we apply this book to our lives? Is we follow in the example that Paul is leading. Never stray. From your uh, never stray from what you have learned about Christ, never stray from what the Bible teaches. Always turn to your word if someone has a question, if someone has a reason for your faith, lead them to the word. You know, I'm trying to uh, record sideways, but it's not working because my eyes are way over here. But uh, I'm gonna record regular. So, uh, let's go ahead and jump into chapter 3, and I pray a special blessing upon the hearing, upon the reading, and upon applying God's word to our lives. 2 Timothy chapter 3. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. For of this sort <clears throat> are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jamb Jambres resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth, men of corrupt minds, disapproved concerning the faith, but they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifest to all, as their lives, as theirs also was. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured. And out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures 
which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. <clears throat> I'm going to read it one more time. This time out of the New Living Translation for a better understanding. It pretty much speaks for itself. There's going to be some hard times coming, people. There's, the hard times are here. This list of, of things, of characteristics of people who turn their back on God are people that we see today. We used to be like that. We used to be backbiters of God and lovers of money instead of God and lovers of ourselves. You know, and we see that in our in our societies and uh, on social media and stuff like that, that people love themselves more than they love God. 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1. You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times, for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. You remember when Jesus was, uh, in, in, I think it's in the book of John, <clears throat> where he talks about the, the scribes and the Pharisees, and, uh, and he says that they are like whitewashed tombs, but inside them, they're full of dead man's bones. You know, and, uh, and that's how these false people are. This is how people are becoming. People are becoming glorious looking on the outside, but inside they're full of trash. You know what? But I have to tell you that as you fill your life with God's word, as you, as you meditate on his word and, and fill your heart and your mind with, with God, with the power, with the Holy Spirit, you shall radiate from the outside, from the inside out. You know, that love of Christ that is in you will show on the outside. Amen? Verse 6. They are the kind that who work their way into people's homes and win the confidence of vulnerable women who are burdened with the guilt of sin <clears throat> and controlled by various desires. Such women are forever following new teachings, but they are never able to understand the truth. These teachers oppose the truth just as Janus and Jambres opposed Moses. They have depraved minds and a counterfeit faith. Is your faith counterfeit? Is your faith true? You know, it, it's important for us to examine ourselves, examine our walk. Have you really surrendered to Christ? Do you know God's word? Are you prepared to stand up to the devil when he tempts you, attacks you, comes at you. He will come at you. People will tell you that there is a better way, that the grass is greener on the other side, but you know that anybody who lives a godly life must suffer persecution. Just like Paul suffered persecution. Verse 10, But you, Timothy, certainly know what I teach and how I live, and what my purpose in life is. You know my faith, my patience, my love, and my endurance. You know how much persecution and suffering I have endured. You know all about how I was persecuted in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, but the Lord rescued me from all of it. Yes, and everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution, but God will deliver us out of it. But God will deliver us out of it. Amen? But evil people and imposters will flourish. 
It says here in the New King James Version, But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Deceiving and being deceived. Don't be deceived by a lie. Open up your Bible. Read about what God's Word says. If you have something that you don't understand, don't get into a debate with another person. Don't argue on the fact that you don't understand what that means. I'm sure the Holy Spirit will open your eyes for you. It says, but you must remain faithful to the things that you have been taught. You know they are true, for you can trust those who taught you. When you know something is real, you know it in your gut that it's real. When you know something is, is true, you just have this feeling and this, this, this knowing. I don't know where it comes from, but you know when a person is lying and when a person is walking in the truth. Verse 15, you have been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood, and they have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. The evidence is all around us. Are you trusting in God today? The evidence is all around us. You're seeing drug addicts being restored. You're seeing gang members being restored. You're seeing families being restored right in front of your eyes. Don't you see that Christ is real? Don't you know that Christ will set you free? Don't you know that if you give your life to Jesus Christ, he will deliver you out of that pit that you're in? It says here in verse 16 that all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. Are we going to be like those people in the wilderness who denied God? God sent Moses. Moses preached the word. The people denied him because they wanted something that they can grasp. They didn't see no way that they could trust in a God that was unseen. Can you trust in, in our Heavenly Father? Can you trust in Jesus? None of us have seen him, but we know that he is real. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Amen to that. Open up your Bible today. Read 2 Timothy chapter 3. Open up your heart. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you so that you may prepare yourself when these evil people come at you with another doctrine. When these people come at you saying there's a different Messiah, be prepared to show them that Jesus Christ is real that Jesus Christ came to this earth and died for you and rose again and on the and sits at the right hand of God in heaven you know this chapter is so good this word is so good it helps you it builds you up it takes away the 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 stony heart and helps you to pluck out those weeds of doubt, those weeds of addiction, those weeds of, uh, of, of boasting and, and, and <clears throat> lover, loving yourself and helps you have self-control and teaches you to be more like God. I want to encourage you today. Now, even though my life was a mess, God restored me beyond anything that I can imagine. I'm not rich. I'm not a good speaker. I'm not a celebrity. I'm just a man in Modesto, California who wants to let you know
that God loves you. You know, uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the video there. I'm waiting for uh, Pastor David to come to my house so he can pick up this gift that I made for the church. Just a simple cabinet. You know, something that uh, God gave me a skill, and that skill I put to use for my church. So, in a little bit, this will be loaded up in Pastor David's car, and we will deliver it to the church. Something simple. If God gave you a gift, use it. Use it for good. You know? I left the sides unstained so that we can burn it, stain it, and make it our own. So there you guys have it. I hope you guys have a blessed day. And uh, just get in that word. You know, I'm not perfect. Look at it. I got a hole on my shirt. Look at all this. I'm just a man like you. I'm just a, a human being like you. I'm normal. But yet I'm not. But I know that I have the love of Christ in me. I know that the Holy Spirit roams in my heart. I know that God's Spirit roams in my house. And the devil has no dominion over me, over me anymore. I don't serve him anymore. I serve our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I hope this video touches your heart. I hope you find your place in God's kingdom. And that you find your identity and your purpose in this life. Because if we can't live for Jesus, we might as well be dead. If we can't live for God and find the, the truth in God's word, then we might as well not even be here. But God sent you to watch this video. So God bless you guys, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.